Good afternoon. My name is Dwayne Arneson. I'm going to give a kind of an adjunct testimony to what Bob has already spoken about. After graduating from college with degrees in physics and math, I entered the Air Force, got a commission, and served 26 years as a communication electronics officer in positions all over the world, including Vietnam. <coughs> My highest clearance to hell was a top secret crypto special compartment information talent keyhole. For those that know clearances, you gotta be almost squeaky clean to get that. Back in 1967, I was officer in charge of the communications center at the 28th Air Division in Great Falls, Montana. I was also the crypto custodian. I was a top secret control officer for the division, and I passed out nuclear launch authenticators. In March of that particular year, I can clearly recall a message coming through my communications center, which basically said, what Bob has already talked about, that a UFO did in fact shut down several missile silos in Montana. Not being a missile type, I didn't know Oscar flight from Echo flight, so I couldn't relate to any of those details, but the fact was that a missile, missiles were shut down by them. Later on, in the mid-70s, about 1975, I was commander of a radar site in Maine, which was adjacent to Loring Air Force Base. Periodically, my security cop and I met with the SAC security police, and on two occasions that I can recall distinctly, they told us that UFOs were seen over the nuclear weapons storage areas at Loring Air Force Base, which was a SAC bomber base, as some of you may well know. I don't know what the details were. I don't know if any uh, nukes were damaged or deactivated. I never saw a report on that, so I really can't say. That, that is history. <clears throat> After retiring from the Air Force, I went to work for Boeing as a computer systems analyst. Bob didn't mention this, but one of my first supervisors at Boeing was Robert Kaminsky. He has since passed away. He was the engineer selected by Boeing to go out and investigate the UFOs, that the missiles that were shut down. He living close by where I live in Washington State, we got together frequently on Saturday to discuss UFOs and other topics. And he says, Arnie, those things were perfectly clean, and they did not go down by themselves. He then went on to say that halfway through the investigation, the Air Force sent Boeing a message which said, stop the investigation and do not repeat, do not send us a report. He told me that personally on two or three different occasions, and no, uh, no hesitation at all. In conclusion, I've studied UFOs for over 60 years, believe it or not, and I am convinced that somebody out there is trying to send us a message. If I knew who they were, I probably would not be here. Thanks for your time. Good afternoon. My name is Robert Jameson. Between January 1965 and October of 1967, I was stationed at Mothstrom Air Force Base as a combat missile target and team commander. Our main job was to point the missiles in the right direction. Also, we may be dispatched from time to time to a restart. In case any missile goes off alert, we have to restart and verify the targeting data. In March 1967, I was on alert for dispatch. And that evening, I got a call from job control saying the missile is going down and Oscar flight go out and restart it, which was nothing unusual up to this point. I called my team, then I went down into the, to the hangar. As soon as I got to the hangar, some acquaintances of mine approached me and says, Bob, do you know what happened? No, I don't know what happened. And he says, well, a missile, a UFO, was sighted over Lewistown, Montana, actually over Roy, Montana, Lewistown's the nearest town of any significance. But over that Lewistown, Roy, Montana, which is the center of Oscar flight. And when that UFO, at the same time that UFO was over there, all of Oscar flight went down. Well, that was highly unusual. I went to job control to verify it, and yes, they confirmed it. And I was looking at the status board they have. They have a map, the whole wing. I noticed everything was green. All the lights, they have this 
mites were mysticites. All the mites were green except one corner, in the upper right hand corner, was all red. All of Oscar flight was down. I mentioned to them that doesn't happen. And he says, well, it happened once before, about a week before. A UFO was sighted over Echo Flight, and about the same time, all missiles in Echo Flight went down. He says, other than that and this, this is it. It's never have happened before. Personally, I'm never aware of any two missiles going down at the same time, let alone 10. I also learned, UFO, the uh, people in job control was telling me, that earlier that day, a UFO was sighted over Belt, Montana, another town in Montana, small town east of Mostrum. And it went into a canyon. And immediately, they notified the Air Force. We sent a team out there to investigate it. And sure enough, there was a UFO apparently at the bottom of that canyon. Job control told me, go over to the uh, emergency command post they have set up in the colonel's briefing room. I had access to that location. I went over there. The room was too crowded to really gain anything. I did hear radio contacts with a team out on the field mentioning lights at the bottom and everything, but I didn't, uh, couldn't get too close enough to really find out what was going, ha going to happen. I left the room and started wandering around getting my team ready. Went into debriefing. We always go, before the, a job, we go to a debriefing. Here's where they give us information such as road conditions and weather conditions, things we might expect out in the field. So I went over there and they went through the normal debriefing and then they said to me, I want you to go to another table at the other end of the briefing room for a special briefing. I went over there and another NCO approached me I knew him because he sometimes our, was our debriefer or briefer. And he says, look, we have a problem. We have UFOs in the area. They've been messing with our missile sites. There are certain procedures we want you to do if you should see one out in the field. And he proceeded to tell me what to do. If we're out on a road, we see a UFO. We do not go to the launcher, but instead to the launch control facility, also we'll call job control and let them know what we're doing. If we're at a site and we're penetrating, then we have to stop what we're doing, remove ourselves from the site, call job control. We all have radio controls, radio contacts with all these. Call the job control and uh, wait for further instructions. Now, if we're at the site and we're doing our work, I have to take myself, my team, and the targeting tapes, go into the launcher, close the personnel hatch. Now, all the teams, before you go out to the field, will take, our, take with us an armed guard. That's just normal. You have to leave the one guard, armed guard, on top, all by himself, and he's supposed to report to job control or the launch control facility or what he was seeing. And then he, and I says, okay. But then he says, oh, another thing, don't leave yet. We're going to hold everybody back until we're sure that all the activity out in the field has ceased, at least for the time being. So I waited around about an hour and a half. He was all ready to go. Then they contacted me and says, okay, you can go now. So I went with my team, we went out to the field. We went, restarted, we had to go to Oscar flight. That's not a very pleasant thing. Oscar flight, 120 miles, it's the furthest flight from the base. And in Air Force trucks, that's not the most comfortable ride. But nevertheless, we went out to Oscar flight and we restarted, I think it was either three or four missiles. This is where Bob was at at the time. We restarted three or four of their missiles. The startups were successful. And I saw no incidents in the field. When I came back, we have to go through debriefing. First things I asked them upon return to the base, what about this missile out in Belt? They said, as soon as light, daylight came, we were going to send choppers over. It was nighttime when they first saw it, and they wasn't going to, no one was going to uh, have them scale down the mountain at nighttime. So was, they were going to send some choppers down and scale the mountain, scale the canyon, daylight time. As soon as daylight time came up, this thing shot up right through the everything just disappeared, more or less. So that uh, was that. Now, also, about a week later, I also heard that a UFO was sighted over India flight, and there was a partial shutdown. I think four or five missiles went was shut down in India flight with a UFO overhead, not the whole flight. And I had to go out and restart uh, at least two of them. And then the rest of my time in Montana, I was involved in no more further UFO incidents, nothing else happened. 
and then I went on elsewhere.